Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's first video. We're going to have a look at the JMA free monthly seasonal model uh, for today's first video. So it's going to take us from uh, November next month through to January 2019. So quite an interesting update to start us off uh, for today's first video. Actually, three videos coming up today. The second video uh, this afternoon, we'll be having a look at the weather for next week to 10 days. That's your regular 10-day weather forecast video. And uh, then this evening, we're actually going to have a little update for Halloween and for Bonfire Night which is now in the time frame of the extended GFS model. But starting us off is our JMA lookhead for the next um, three months. Now, this is going to form part of the seasonal model roundup that we're going to do on Saturday uh, for the winter of 2000. Uh, 18, 19. So we'll get something like 12 long range uh, models together on Saturday and we'll see what all of them are showing uh, for the winter uh, that's coming up. The JMA always forms part of that uh, update, but um, of course we've got 12 other models to look at, or 11 other models to look at as well as the JMA in that update. So we can't go through all of the information that you can get from the JMA seasonal uh, model. You can get a lot of information from this model. Uh, so we always like to take this one out, isolate it out, and do an update for it on its own uh, sort of terms, really, and that's what we're going to do for today's uh, first video. But this will form part of the seasonal model roundup that will be coming up on Saturday, first video up on Saturday morning. So we'll start off by having a look at the 500 millibar height anomalies for the next three months, and then we'll see how the temperature and precipitation anomalies are going. Uh, along with those heights. So we begin here on or uh, in November. This is the 500 millibar height only from the JMA for November 2018. You know with these height anomalies, blue is extrapolating to uh, low pressure and yellow, orange and red extrapolating to high pressure. The North Pole is just here. So we're looking at the North Pole uh, view down into the mid latitudes. So for November, we find that the JMA is forecasting an area of below average heights to be to the west of the country through the middle part of the Atlantic. And then we've got above average heights um, kind of like o over to the east of the country and also to the northeast as well. So the flow of the jet will be doing something a little bit like that. It does look very unsettled, really, for uh, November. This trough in the Atlantic would be throwing up regular uh, rain bands, I would have thought. And, of course, with the high pressure over to the east and the low pressure to the west, it means that we draw the air up from kind of like a southerly type direction. So this could actually be quite a mild November coming up if the uh, JMA is right with this. Low pressure out to west, high pressure to the east, you would draw up a southerly flow so mild and potentially quite unsettled, maybe even quite wet through, <coughs> excuse me, through the course of uh, November. Then we go through to December, and this is how December's 500 millibar height anomaly is looking. So for this one, we find we have below average height centred over and just a little bit to the north of the uh, British Isles with above average heights um, to our east in that kind of uh, position again. So it does look very unsettled again in December. The difference really is in the position of the trough. So instead of being to the west of us, the trough is actually centred over slightly to the north of us, which means we're bringing the jet stream actually through the country rather like that. So it's still unsettled. You would still be expecting quite a lot of wet to ever with that. But it is quite a bit cooler as well as the air coming around this trough with the jet stream is kind of like coming from the northern part of the Atlantic. So, yes, still unsettled, both November and December, shaping up to be unsettled months if this is right. But the difference is that November is potentially quite mild, but December is potentially a little bit cooler. And there might even be a little bit of wintry potential in with that during the course of uh, December as well, as uh, we find the air coming down from the northern Atlantic at times. It's not a wintry month, but there might be a little bit of wintry potential in there in what would probably be overall a relatively cool month and unsettled too. I mean, a big change for January. Now, remember, this is month number three, so it's a very long way out. But in January, we are placing a large blocking area of high pressure to our north. We see a real blocking signal over Greenland and extending back to the North Pole and to the north of Scandinavia. There's a trough over central parts of Europe across Germany 
also a deep trough into northern and eastern parts of America. So it's turning very cold, this, in America. But it could also be quite cold here in the UK and across northern Europe as well. Because with this blocking signal kind of like over the pole... The trough over Central Europe, we would be forcing winds into much more of an east or northeasterly type direction. So that could be a wintry January after a couple of unsettled months in uh, November and December. January would turn drier because the Atlantic is blocked off, but it could also turn a lot colder in January as well with um, easterly or northeasterly winds. That is month number three, so it's very unreliable. It's the furthest month that's uh, in this update, furthest month away. But, um, yeah, if we get that sort of blocking over North Pole, then watch out. So let's have a look at the tropical and mid-latitude view in terms of the uh, temperature precipitation on it. So we come to this chart, and this is going back to uh, November again. The British Isles is just here in the top right-hand corner of the chart, as uh, looking, looking at it. Now, we can't see the North Pole uh, on this chart, but we've just looked at the pole view down, so we don't really need to see the pole again. North Pole is up there. Uh, and a reminder of the um, the uh, week of the uh, month one, 500 millibar height anomaly for November, with the below average heights again out to the west of the country. If we come over to this side of the chart, we can see the above average heights to our east between the two, probably forcing up quite a mild southwest wind. So you, we thought this would probably be a mild and unsettled month. Let's have a look at the temperature anomaly for November 1st of all. And that's coming out above average. It's not a big deviation. Perhaps would have expected, expected it to be a little bit milder than that. But nevertheless, still above average temperatures are being forecast by the JMA model for, uh, for November. Now, if we have a look at the precipitation anomaly for November, we can see that also above average rainfall. So above average temperatures, above average rainfall uh, for November being forecast by the JMA. And the mean wind direction, so it's not quite as southerly as I thought it might be, actually. It's more sort of southwest. It's always a job to make these black arrows out. But if you can just see how they're coming into the UK, kind of like from a southwest direction, the southerlies are actually going a little bit to the east of us, interestingly. So the milder air from the Mediterranean will actually be flooding into central parts of Europe. We are, that's why we're not that mild with the temperature knowledge. It's more sort of west southwesterly as opposed to uh, southerly. But obviously an unsettled and relatively mild November is being forecast. So we go through to uh, December and the 500 millibar height anomaly for December places at trough of below average heights over and a little bit to the north of the UK this time. We send the jet stream a little bit to our south going into that sort of uh, direction. So it is a cooler month, I would have thought, in December, but still uh, very unsettled. Temperature anomalies are actually holding up okay. It's not forecasting a cold of an average month. Again, we're coming out close to, or even a little bit above average with the temperature anomaly during the course of uh, December. And still unsettled, the rainfall anomaly in December is above average as well. The mean wind direction for uh, December is kind of like west northwesterly. Again, very difficult to make those black arrows out on the chart, but the, the arrows are going in that kind of direction. So it certainly won't be an overly warm month, that, although the model is going for slightly above average temperatures. To be honest, I expect it would be relatively cool, really, with the air being forced out of um, sort of the North Atlantic sort of Greenland, south of Greenland, that kind of area. Uh, so cool and unsettled with west and northwesterly winds uh, and probably quite a bit of rain is a forecast for um, December. And again, there could be a little bit of wintry potential in there. It's not a particularly cold month, but with the wind direction coming from the northwest, particularly for Scotland, Northern Ireland, Northern England, you might get some wintry uh, uh, potential at times. And then we go through to month three, January, and this is the one that has that very extensive northern blocking signal to our north. So again, you can't see the North Pole, but we, we already looked at that view down. We know we have got a big blocking signal over the uh, North Pole from Greenland back up to uh, the Pole. You can just see the edge of that uh, just there in the northern part of the Atlantic. That's the ridge extending down from the Pole 
into Greenland and into the North Atlantic. You notice this very deep trough in over eastern parts of America. They're in for a brutally cold month, if that's correct, with the air coming out of Canada. Uh, for us, where we've got this trough here that's over across central parts of Europe. It's quite a weak trough, but it's a bit of a trough in the 500 millibar flow across central Europe. And so with the ridge to our north, the trough to our east-southeast, you would expect to be forcing in the wind from an east or uh, from a northeasterly uh, direction during the course of January, which would be uh, a cold direction, of course, in the middle of winter. Now, it's still holding up the temperature anomaly, so I'm not sure how that goes along with that 500 millibar height. Only the temperature, temperature anomalies by the JMA are being forecast to be above average. Notice for many uh, sort of eastern parts of America, they're going colder than average. Um, for us in the UK and also for much of Europe, we're coming out still a little bit above average with those temperature anomalies. Rainfall or precipitation anomalies for January still a bit above average uh, and above average across central parts of Europe as well. So an unsettled uh, month in January, if that's right. Uh, and these, these black arrows are showing the wind direction. You can see they're coming from a north or northeasterly direction during the course of January. North or northeasterlies are being forecast by the JMA based on its 500 mm height only. So how do we get a milder than average January with the mean wind direction from the north or the northeast? That is very, very unlikely if the mean wind direction in the middle of winter is coming out of Scandinavia and uh, the North Pole, you're obviously going to get a cold and average month. So once again, we see with these climate models, they are primarily climate models, we see the warm bias at work because with the mean wind direction from a north or northeasterly direction, you are not going to get a milder than average month in the UK and across central parts of Europe. It's, it is not possible that you would do that with a mean wind direction from the north or northeast in the middle of winter. You're going to get a colder than average month. So ignore that temperature anomaly as you very regularly do have to do with these season models. Concentrate on the 500 millibar height anomaly or in sometimes mean sea level pressure anomaly and the mean wind direction that tells you what's much more likely to happen for your temperature and precipitation anomalies and what the model itself is forecasting so what can we take away from this free monthly update from the JMA. It looks like we have a very unsettled end to the year. So both uh, November and December are looking like they're going to be wet months. There'll be quite a bit of rainfall coming in from off the Atlantic. Mild for November, probably near normal to a little bit cool in uh, December, but nothing too dramatic from a temperature perspective. It really is the unsettled flavour of the weather that looks um, that looks most sort of dramatic for the final two months. And then we go through to January. If the model is right with its blocking signal and its mean wind direction, we're in for a cold January. Whatever that model is saying, with its temperature, temperature anomaly, it's wrong. If the wind direction is from the north or northeast, from a blocking area of high pressure that's sitting over the North Pole, we will have a colder than average month, whatever the model is suggesting with its temperature anomaly. The question is, will we have that blocking and will we have the mean wind direction from the north and the northeast? That's what we can't answer because it's three months away. So we can't say definitively that we're going to have a cold January. But again, if that pattern that the model is forecasting was to come off in terms of its 500 bit of our heights, then expect a cold and a wintry January. That's three months away, so I'll have to keep a, a close eye on how that's developing over the next month or two. Right, so as I say, this update from the JMA will form part of the seasonal model roundup for winter of 2018-19, the second one that we're going to be doing um, on Saturday. So um, we'll see what all the other long-range models have to say about this uh, about this winter on Saturday. Um, come back this afternoon when we're going to have a look at the weather for next week to 10 days. And then this evening, we've got a quick update for Halloween and for Bonfire Night. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.